Hi, welcome to ICONS. I'm your host, Walt Smed. Today's show is on California Wildlife Center and rescuing uh, marine mammals, uh, which uh, sounds very interesting right now. And my guests with me today are to my right is Cynthia Reyes, who is the Director of Marine Mammal Response, is that correct? Yes. And uh, Jonesy Ross and Jeff Hall, who are coordinators for, for uh, Marine Mammal Response. Uh, okay, uh, this organization has been in existence uh, now for 10 years, I believe? Correct. Okay, and uh, in the 10 years, I imagine there have been a lot of interesting events, uh, and uh, which we will talk about, but uh, first I want to ask, who, who founded this organization, and when, and Our where? Our organization was co-founded by a gentleman named Aaron Frank. Um, he is still actively involved with California Wildlife Center. He's our board president. Mm -hmm. um, we were established in, a, in the core of the Santa Monica Mountains on property owned by state parks. And we renovated a ranger facility to um, house our rehabilitation facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know at, at the beginning of any organization, it's sometimes just a handful of people. Yes. That uh, decide it's it's a you know w worthwhile thing to put your time and effort into, but uh, over the ten years um, has the organization has grown. Absolutely, we started off with exactly what you said—a handful of people who really were just dedicated to making sure that this program succeeded. And since that time, we've added staff members, and we have veterinarians and. You know, our volunteer program has grown immensely, as well as the addition of the Marine Mammal Response Program. And, and, all and of that. how do you reach out to people to get volunteers, or, or, or are they just witnesses to some of your rescues, and they say, "Hey, I want to do this"? Uh, occasionally, that yeah. happens. That happens quite a bit. Um, we also go to you know community festivals, other outreach events. We have an outreach coordinator who attends all these things, takes all of our information. Anybody's interested in volunteering, they mm -hmm. can get information there and follow up and attend our trainings and we're always looking for more people. Okay, and Jonesy, you're, you're a volunteer, right? Uh, actually, I started out as a volunteer Volunt and staff oh. now, well, too. Well, you're a full staff member, okay. Well, and part time staff. <laughs> okay, and, how, and uh, tell me, how <coughs> what was it that sparked your interest to, to, to become part of that? Well, I've always rescued animals all my life and usually brought a lot of them home. When and you're a little girl and everything, you just, you were that, that kind of person, huh? Yeah, I, I always have been. But I was looking on, online for information on valley quails because I had just, my daughter had found one. Mm -hmm. And I somehow happened onto the Wildlife Center website. And then I just started looking into the things that they did because I thought, well, this sounds really fun. And I saw the marine mammal training and I thought that would be really cool so okay. I went and how, how long was that training uh, it's an eight-hour class and then the day that I trained we actually got a couple calls so I got to go out on a, a rescue that day and mm -hmm. see what it was really like and I was totally hooked wow well I mean y did you actually participate or do you just sort of watch so until you see what they're doing and, and so you know what you're going to do without getting hurt. Well we always have a coordinator on all the rescues and mm -hmm. Cindy was the coordinator that day and they they give everybody something to do but you know in that that instance where I had never done anything what mm -hmm. I was given to do was something that was very non-dangerous and then you just kind of work your way up as you do more and more rescues they teach you more and more things as they feel like you're capable mm -hmm. Of, of doing and that's what we do Jeff and I train volunteers <coughs> too and mm -hmm. we have to you have to really assess the people that you get and you know their weaknesses and their strong points and what they yeah, actually oh, yeah, can do that makes sense and Jeff what about you how uh, what got you in interested and in, in involved in this uh, I was just hanging out at the beach one day in Malibu like about four and a half years ago and I saw this woman walking down the beach with this great big dog crate and I was like where is she going and she went over some rocks and so I just kind of watched her and went over to just see what was going on and she was rescuing a little baby um, sea lion and <coughs> once I saw that I was just like I have to do this <laughs> this is really cool so then I found out what organization she was from and it was the Wildlife Center so, and so, so I started uh, just volunteering there and then last year I came on staff. Okay, so you've been involved with it for about four years? 
Um, almost five years now. It'll be five, five years, years this yeah. fall. And Jones, you, you've been with Ebola almost five years too? Two and a half. Oh, two and a half, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, how you get the response, okay? Who gives you, um, I mean, is it lifeguards? I mean, who tells you that there's a problem somewhere? We get calls from everywhere. We get calls from lifeguards and just people that live on the beach. Everyone that lives on the beach pretty much knows who we are. So they have, you know, a little magnet on their fridge with our oh, number. Oh, okay. I was going to say, where do they get the number? I mean, yeah. do they go on a computer and look up who rescues that marine way animals? Too. Well, yeah. They do that as well. They do that as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so was there someone um, on the phone <coughs> or someone there 24 hours a day? I mean, you go shifts or, or how? We have, a, we have a hotline number that people can call to report a marine mammal on the beach. Mm -hmm. And whoever is on duty for the day in that evening carries the pager with them. So if somebody leaves a message, it will alert our pager and then we contact them. So mm -hmm. we're essentially on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, do you get sometimes calls in, in the wee hours of the morning? <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't typically respond after dark just because it's, it's dangerous for us with wild animals and yeah, the ocean you, and the darkness. Right, because you can't even good. see properly what you need, need to do and, and you yourselves can get hurt at this. Exactly, but we do um, call the people back and, and at least talk them through the situation, find out exactly what's going on so that we were better prepared for yeah, this morning. Yeah, get as much information ahead of time before you get there. Yes. And uh, again, I mean, being involved in this, I mean, there's a certain risk factor. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you, you, there may be a, a seagull, which is not too bad, mm. you know. <laughs> you know <laughs> they bite you. <laughs> yeah. oh, They're okay. pretty nasty, yeah. actually. <laughs> and then you, you have these sea lions and these, you know, large mammals that, that can bite you and, and do all sorts of things. So you, you have to be prepared for that then. Yes, and, and a lot of what we do and a lot of the training we do and the things that we do during a rescue revolve around that risk, um, minimizing it as much as possible mm -hmm. so that way we don't get injured and the volunteers that are with us don't get injured and the animal doesn't get injured in the process yeah, as well. Yeah, well, it makes sense. So th there's, a, there's a lot going on yes. during that whole process. And uh, I can see where, where the excitement level and, <coughs> I mean, because the animals do not know they're being rescued. <laughs> they don't. They, uh, they actually That's think we're trying to kill them. Yeah, they're so being attacked. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, their stress level is up and their, all of their, um, their animosity, if you want to call it that, is focused towards us. So we uh -huh. have to... Uh, minimize that as much as possible well, and, well, and take all kinds of protective measures. Ho hopefully, once they recover, they, they, they'll appreciate the human people, you know, that, that they've actually done some good for them. There's nothing <laughs> happier than a sea lion running out of a crate when he's been released, oh, let me tell you. Right. <laughs> and where do you keep these, these mammals uh, and when, when they have to, you know, a period of time when they have to recover? Well, we don't do the rehabilitation for marine mammals at our facility. We're not set up for that. We do all other native California wildlife, mm -hmm. but the rehabilitation for marine mammals requires very specific conditions and pools and things that we just don't have. So the marine mammals are from our area are transported to the Marine Mammal Care Center in San Pedro. Mm -hmm. They are the um, rehabilitation facility for LA County. Wow. So okay. all the animals both north and south LA County go there. And so maybe, um, you know, Jonesy, you can tell us what kind of equipment do you use for, I mean, because obviously you can't just pick something up. Right. Well, we have different equipment for different animals. The larger animals, we have a really big net that we use, and we have really big, like the plastic dog crates that you've seen, mm -hmm. the, we have huge ones to put the, the larger animals in. We have different size nets for smaller animals, and for the birds, we do okay. different things too. Okay. We use, always use gloves. We have herding boards, um, the nets, and we always have a game plan, <laughs> mm -hmm. too, that we kind of work out with everyone before we start the rescue so everybody knows okay. what they're supposed and, to and do. And how many, depending on, the, I guess, the situation, how many uh, typically respond on, on a situation? Four or five people? How many do you? It, it, it's dependent on the species that we're dealing with and the size of the animal. Uh -huh. So a larger animal is going to require more people, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, usually there's a minimum of two people if it's a small animal. Um, anything larger than, I would say, maybe 
60 pounds requires at least three or four. And, and you say 60 pounds, but many of them are, are much, much yes. more than 60 pounds. <laughs> we're, we're talking Everything about is bigger than 60 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> are we talking about like hundreds of pounds? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. So they, they weigh more than you do. Yes, <laughs> <Yeah>. they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, listen, we're, we've, you've brought some, some videos here to actually see some of this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as soon as we, we get them on there, you know, we'll, we'll get to actually see what, uh, what we've been talking about. And, uh, <laughs> how how exciting that can be